Hey fellow Vault Wearers, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you the universal build, the jack of all trades, the all-in-one build. I made it, I finally made it. I was resisting for years, but I did it. And I took a spin, I tried, I put everything together and it works. So I'm super satisfied with the results. It is working. It is a full health. It is a low health. It is a sneak and it is a tank. So everything in one. Let's maybe start from the full health. I have all those Nuka grapes for a reason. Can drink some. So as usually, let's start from the special distribution. And no, I'm not gonna lie. You will not be able to get all of that early game. It is a late game build. If you want to equip every single possible weapon on you, first you need to have them. Second, you need to have perks to support it. So that's a lot of special required. This is a base special before application of legendary perks. There is additional 20 points from the legendary perks. So let's jump straight in there. Legendary perks, it includes both damage related perks, follow through and taking one for the team, so sneaking, tanking or applying both. It is possible to open battle with follow through and then when enemy hits you, it will apply taking one for the team. So you can have both, it is possible. Just don't forget taking one for the team only works if you have at least one teammate. So if you are a solo player, you probably don't want this card, you want to swap it. Or if you never sneak, you can swap that, if you rarely sneak. You can make those choices if one of the playthroughs is your favorite. But if you want to use both sneaking and tanking those cards, then agility, endurance, intelligence and luck. Those are my special boosters max out. So total of 20 special points. It doesn't really matter which ones you will have. You just need 20 extra special points. And you need those points for following perks. Under strength, traveling pharmacy for your camps. Rank 1 heavy gunner, each one of them. One rank 1 master shotgunner, each one of them. So you can see there are three shotgunner cards, three heavy gunner parts total. And blocker, that's for, that is for tankiness. Incisor. This is one perk that covers all melee weapons that we'll be using. It's really the one essential melee weapon perk. After that, you have foot. So you can boost melee weapon damage easily with foot. And someone is sharing some carry weight, which is nice. Then under perception, we have one rank of each rifleman perk. Max out tank killer. Concentrated fire, rank one. And grenadier, max out rank two. As you notice, no commando perk. Even though I am using a quad fixer on this build, commando perks are not necessary if you are going for VATS criticals with a commando weapon. Yeah, I know, it looks weird, but it's not, not essential at all. It works great, I will show you. Then, endurance, we have two essential perks, life giver and fireproof. Both beneficial for full health, low health, power armor, non-power armor, every time those are the best endurance perks in my opinion and then under charisma strength in numbers tenderizer and friendly fire this one for healing allies just rank one it's a little bit of healing occasionally can be needed i want to have it all in universal build then intelligence we have nerd rage stabilized and demolition expert demolition expert is essential if you want to use your launchers then under agility, we have rank one of each gunslinger perk. We have max out through hiker. We have rank one of enforcer, rank one of born survival and escape artist is all we need for sneaking. And then max out adrenaline. The reason for that adrenaline perk boosts all our weapons. So we want it max out normally. I quite often recommend rank 1, 
But in this case scenario, when we have so many weapons, there is no other perk apart from Adrenaline, Nerd Rage and Bloody Mess that will boost all our weapons. So we want that. And of course, Luck includes Bloody Mess, universal damage boost for all weapons. Better criticals, only rank 1. Class Freak, as there is a bunch of mutations to support this playstyle. Star Jeans, to keep mutations. Critical Savvy, to get our crit every other shot. And Good With Salt, to keep the food on hand. Food is a huge ally on this build. It can benefit any playstyle. And it's handy to just always have it with you. So good with Salt and through Hiker, amazing combo for Universal build. Oh, and I didn't show you mutations. So let me put it in the right place on the video by editing. Adrenal Reaction for more damage at low health. Earth Bones for more agility, better sneaking, no power landing in power armor when you jump. Carnivore for all those sweet meat benefits. Eagle Eyes for crit damage and perception. Egghead for extra intelligence and therefore experience, herd mentality for free special where, while grouped, then marsupial jumping higher, scaly skin, free resistance, speed demon, faster movement, faster reload, twisted muscles, more damage with auto axe and other melee weapons, slight penalty to gun accuracy. Not a big deal, because we have class freak, so that's just 12%. You can do with it. Now, the gear and the weaponry. This is huge. This is huge, so bear with me. Weapons. You have a huge selection what you can choose. What I have is anti-armor flamer, sniper gauss rifle. So I can snipe. I have cold shoulder for freezing and some shotgun fun and everyday challenges. Quad light machine gun, especially for far away flying targets. Then quad Tesla for tagging on events. Quad fixer for sneaking around and doing high DPS. It's explosive one. Honestly, I would recommend non-explosive. The downside of explosive one, I'm triggering my own born survival if I try to use it close range while sneaking. So it's supposed to be non-explosive. I don't have a non-explosive one at this moment, so this is explosive. Two-shot alien blaster. This is our gun slinger weapon. Amazing power. Very small, but powerful. Boomstick for this cool targeting computer takedowns on flying scourge beasts. Two-shot cryo, snowball fun. Currently two-shot Gatling Plasma. After next patch, it will need to be changed to anti-armor Gatling Plasma. Two-shot Nuka Launcher. Currently not obtainable in the game. Hopefully it will return to Stamp Vendor at some point. Two-shot Overkill. The best one-shot kill on Scorchvis in VATS with a critical. Two-shot minigun, another tagging weapon on events, especially out in the open. Very high range, nice area of coverage, easy tagging. Where Tesla cannot do, two-shot minigun can. Vampire Enclave Flamer, all around super powerful weapon. And I'm lucky to have one with faster fire rate. You are basically unkillable while using it and destroy everything. So that's awesome. As a melee weapon, we have Auto Axe, Vampire, Power Attack Damage. Chainsaw will be equally good. So either this one or the Chainsaw. I have Electrified mode for more damage, as I already carry a Flamer for healing purposes. So I don't need a Flame on this one. Then Pepper Shaker for crippling. Everything is crippled with just one rank of enforcer. Wherever I want to cripple something, pepper shaker, single barrel, will do it. And those are all weapons currently equipped and that I'm carrying. It's probably already too many. You don't need all of them, but you can use any single one of those or similar or even more with this build 
quite easily. We are not using grenades. I can get rid of those. This is just a dead weight. Now, armor. In case of power armor, it is a union armor, and that's what we'll be using. It is a mix of different legendary effects, but important for me is weapon weight reduction on the third star. Then from the modifications, it's important on arms to have optimized bracers that reduces the cost of using auto axe. Then for the helmet, I have targeting HUD. Highlighting targets is very handy. Another arm, optimized bracers. Legs, calibrated shocks for more carry weight. And that's a torso with emergency protocols. Even when I will play full health, I will keep emergency protocols. I do not need a jetpack because as you can see, I have jetpack underneath on my secret service armor. So if I want jetpack, I just exit power armor, I can fly. I re-enter power armor and I'm basically unkillable. That's the strategy. Now, about the regular armor, it is unyielding. Wherever I choose to sneak around, I will be going low health. This is the most powerful play. So if I want full damage, stealth, VATS commando, I just drop health with some toxic goo. It's very easy to achieve. Or other pieces are ultralight, all boot chest, full set of secret service. The chest, of course, is a jetpack, so I can fly. And now let's re-enter power armor, and I will show you how this build works in every case scenario. Full health, low health, sneaking. Different weapons. Bear with me. So let's start with some classic super mutant destruction. Full health tank, starting with the flamer. It's working, it's working and I want this mini nuke, oh, there is no mini nuke, I let it blow up the mini nuke, that's not good, I wanted to use this mini nuke, so it is working, next, not the sniper, the cold shoulder, shooting up close, level 100 super mutant, takes multiple shots, but Cold Shoulder is not here to be the main damage source. It is both for crippling and freezing enemies. And it is working. Next we have Light Machine Gun. Mainly intended for flying targets. But absolutely can destroy a super mutant. After that, that's tagging. So we skip the Tesla. We go for the two-shot alien blaster. Even though we are in the power armor and not sneaking. It can still absolutely eradicate everything. Okay, let's swap to the first person. It will be better. I like the highlight on enemies. Yep, it is working. Then two shot cryo. The devastating weapon of the snowball variety can absolutely destroy a super mutant. The Gatling plasma. I do want to switch and use some cores instead of regular ammo. Insane power. But it always was. The Nuka Launcher, used up close, can kill and I can absolutely tank it, especially when I'm a full health. Full health approach, you can see the Nuka Launcher, amazing devastation, super mutants are big, hit everywhere and I can use it close to myself, no problem. Then if I want to heal and swap for some vampire weapon. The Enclave Plasma, another devastating weapon that only melts enemies even though I'm full health, but heals me like crazy. Then Red Upper. If I want to just save on my ammo, go melee. Look at that. Absolutely destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. Now, if I choose to go and sneak a little bit, I can simply exit my power armor, go on the quick wheel, pop a bunch of toxic goo, get quicker with a keyboard, make sure I'm in the nerd rage, nerd rage confirmation, I can move, popping 
Yao Guai pastry for some extra carry weight and I'm not even over encumbered. Now the weapon side table for sneaking will be a sniper instigating ghosts. And now if we fully charge it, aim for the head, it's one shot kill. Even though it's a universal build, absolutely capable of sniping with one shot if you can actually hit enemy and not just damage it slightly. Here you go. If I'm detected, I will run a little bit and try to go back. Yeah. Escape artist makes me invisible and helps to avoid further detection. Next, flamer surprisingly, the flamer double dips into a stealth weapon. So you can see sneak attack damage bonus apply and I can sneak with a flamer. So not only healing, not only power armor, but as well as sneaking. Uh, next on the list is our fixer. It's better out in the open because it's explosive. When I want to go for VATS, I will choose this weapon. I will aim for the head and super mutants will indeed melt. So you can see that no commando perks required. The sneak and VATS itself works great. Quad fixer does the job. No complaints here. Up to 500 damage from a critical to the head. I don't think you will need any more. Then there is Alien Blaster, absolutely sightable for stealth. And saves you lots of ammo. Okay, where are those super mutants? There they are. Not even critical needed. Just pop to the head and if it's critical, it's one pop. One shot pop if you have a critical for the Alien Blaster. Oh, that's a freestyle legendary. Thank you for sacrificing yourself to Alien Blaster and please give me this legendary item. Thank you. Next, uh, what else do we have? That's side table for sneaking. And I think not too much. Oh, surprisingly, the overkill is side table for sneaking, but I would absolutely kill myself if I use it now. So we save it for later. And yes, you can absolutely be a sneaky Fatman user, so we have a Scourge Beast here. All you need to do to be a sneaky Fatman user, first we stack the critical. I think critical is active now. We swap to a Fatman. We target the Scourge Beast and fire. Now we wait. We wait. And here is the hit. Almost died. Okay, I was a little bit short with stack adrenaline or with power armor. I will have enough. But as you can see, I'm still, I'm still sneaking. I'm still sneaking. So let's try again. I have one more mini nuke. Fire. Is that enough? No, don't land here. No, no, don't land here. Yeah, that's enough. So with adrenaline properly stuck. I can one shot take down a Scourge Beast with a Fatman. Now, if I want to go Power Armor Tank, I absolutely can. I enter my Union Power Armor, which, which is the best Power Armor in the game. And if you miss on that from the next update, from the June update, it will be way cheaper with stamps and you'll be able to actually unlock it. So don't worry is coming for you if you don't have it yet and now the power armor tank oh that's a freestyle legendary but we cannot fight it until it will get hostile now it is hostile firing a critical and hopefully it will not land it was almost yeah freestyle legendary is a little bit too much for one shot takedown but then we can grab our boomstick there is this boomstick loaded in fire and forget systems activated fire oh, i'm getting staggered fire you can see it's doing really good damage that's a freestyle legendary so that's very resilient scorch beast and those messiah are homing on the target and last one did it and broke my toy. That's unfortunate. 
but that to be expected. Now we can just roast that. So you can see this build is lots of fun. Can use everything you really want to use. It can one shot flying scorch beasts with a mini nuke. It can launch a homing missile on your targets. Break your weapon as fast as your targets. So I think that's a first fair deal. Can do absolutely everything. Super tanky build. Can use any weapon. You don't need to swap anything. You have it all at hand. Let me know what you think. I'm really satisfied with this build. It exceeded my expectations. It's performing better than I anticipated it would be. So I'm super happy with that. Can use everything. I don't need to swap anything. And that's the brilliance of this build. And now as always, thank you all for watching and see you all in the next one.